Hi, welcome to my channel to Irrational. I'm Pranay Sharma and in this video we are going to solve some sums of permutation and combination. In the last two videos, we have learned the concept and formulas of permutation and combination and understand how to use them. In this video, we are going to see more elaborate questions. Let's start with the first one. How many four digit natural numbers can be formed from the digits 1, 2, 3, 4 that does not exceed 4321 if the digits can repeat? First, I'll create these four boxes that represent the spaces that we are going to fill with these digits 1, 2, 3, 4. First, let's forget about the restriction that our value does not exceed 4, 3, 2, 1. We are going to take that into account later on. So if we do not have any restriction, in how many ways can we fill these four boxes? Because we can repeat the digits, we will have four options for our first digit, four options for our second, third as well as fourth and together we'll just multiply them. In total, we are going to have 4 raised to 4, that is 256. Now, if repetition was not possible, then we know for each one of them, we would have one option less. That means we would have 4, 3, 2, 1 or 4 factorial options if repetition was not possible. So, there are 256 ways we can make 4 digit numbers with 1, 2, 3, 4 where repetition is possible. But we do not want it to exceed 4321. Now, one way would be that I restrict my values according to the places. I can say here for the first box, we will have four options that is 1, 2, 3, 4. But depending on what value we have here, either 1, 2, 3 or 4, our options for the second box will differ. Because if I have 1, 2, 3, then I can have all four options in my second one that is our 1, 2, 3, 4. But if I have 4, then I will have only 3 options 1, 2 or 3 so that it does not exceed 4321. So it becomes very difficult to create cases in such a way. But I can find out how many numbers will exceed this 4321 and then I can subtract that from the total. Now let's do that. Here, if I want a value to exceed 4321, so in my thousands place, I have only one option that is going to be 4. For the second one, I have option 3 or 4, so therefore I will put 2 here. That I have two options. For the third place, similarly, I will have three options. I can have 2, 3 or 4. And in the fourth place, I will have four options that is going to be 1, 2, 3 or 4. In any of these combinations or you can say permutations, I will always have a value that is greater or equal to 4321. So the number of ways would be this much. That is our four factorial ways. But they said we should not exceed 4321 and because 4321 is included here, I will subtract 1. So these are the number of ways I will have values that are greater than 4321. So our total ways becomes 256 minus 23, that is 233. Let's see our second question. How many words can be formed with the letters of word Sunday? How many of the words begin with N? How many begin with N and end in Y? So here we have three different questions. We will solve one by one. First, how many words can be formed with the letters of word Sunday? So because we have six letters here, so the number of ways would be nothing but six factorial. That is 720. For the second one, how many of the words begin with N? Let's take our six boxes, that is our six spaces and fill them up. So we fix our first letter as N, that means we have only one option for that. For the rest of the boxes, we have five options that cannot be repeated. Therefore, we can fill them by five factorial ways. 
So the total number of ways would be 1 into 5 factorial that is 120. So that means 120 of those 720 start with the letter N. For the last one, how many begin with N and end in Y? So we get our six boxes again. In the first one, we are saying we are fixing the value N. In the last one, we are fixing the value Y. So again, only one option and only one option for the first and the last one. But the middle four can be filled up with any of those four options that we are left with. So that becomes four factorial ways. So again, total number of ways we will have four factorial that is 24 ways. This is a typical question where we see some kind of restriction when we are forming our permutations. Let's see another question. If all the letters of the word again be arranged in a dictionary, what is the 50th word? In the word again, we have five letters. So the ways we can arrange them would be five factorial. But because we have two A's that are repeating, so we'll have to divide by the repeating number of A's that would be two factorial. This becomes total number of words that we can form. Now we want to figure out which one is going to be the 50th word if we are writing them in the form of dictionary. That means starting with A, then B, but we do not have B. So the next letter that we are going to see is going to be G, then I, then N. So let's figure out how many of these 5 factorial by 2 factorial that is 120 by 2, that is 60 letters will start with A. Let's bring out our trusty boxes. We will fix our first letter as A. For the rest 4, we will have an option of 4 factorial. That means there are 24 letters, 24 words that start with the letter A. Now in this 24, I am not dividing by 2 because in these 4, I was left with only A, G, I, N. I do not have any repetition when I am talking about these four letters. Now the next letter in the dictionary is going to be G. So I fix that in my first letter then I will have 4 factorial by 2 factorial because here I have two A's I and N. So the number of ways we will arrange them is going to be 4 factorial by 2 factorial. That is 12 ways. The next in the sequence is going to be I and again I will have 4 factorial by 2 factorial ways that gives me 12. Now clearly our 50th word is going to begin with N. It's going to be the second word that is going to be formed with the beginning letter as N. So we'll have N, A, A, G, I. Then if I rearrange these two, I will get N, A, A, I, G. And that becomes our 50th letter because this is going to be 49 and this will be 50. Let's see another question. These were all different questions of permutations but you would see that we did not use the formula of NPR because, because NPR is directly used only for simple sums where we are selecting R values from N values and arranging them. But combination is used very widely. That is why we have much more formulas for combination as well. Let's use one of them. So we have 20 C5 plus summation R going from 2 to 5, 25 minus R C4. So what do we get here? We are having 20 C5 plus if I start with 5 and go back, I will have 20 C4 plus 21 C4 plus 22 C4 and 23 C4. If we concentrate on this formula, we'll find that these two values can combine and give us N plus 1 CR that would be 21 C5 as 5 is going to be our R. So this becomes N min uh, R minus 1 and our N is same as 20. Using this 21C5 and 21C4, we can combine and make 22C5. 
Similarly, I'll combine these two and I will get 23 C5. Combine these two and I will get 24 C5 and that becomes our answer. If you solve that, we get 42504 as our final answer. Let's solve another sum. A student has to answer 10 questions choosing at least 4 from each of part A and B. If there are 6 questions in part A and 7 questions in part B, in how many ways can a student choose 10 questions? So we have to choose 10 questions in which each of A and B, we should have at least 4 questions or more than 4 questions. So we'll have different cases. I'll say I will have 4A. Then out of B, I will have to select 6. Then I can have 5A and 5B. Or I can have 6A and 4B. So selecting 4A out of 6As, I will have 6CA, sorry, 6C4. And selecting 6Bs from 7, I will have 7C. 6 and because these both are happening together, I will multiply them. And in the second case, I will have 6 C5 into 7 C5. Similarly, in the third case, I will have 6 C6 and 7 C4 multiplied together. I cannot make both of these occur together. So therefore, they are alternates of each other. So I will add them up. Now, whenever you have a value of R that is more than N by 2, you can convert it into N minus R using this formula. So I can also write this as 6 C2, 7 C1 plus 6 C1, 7 C2 plus 6 C0, 7 C3. It's just easier when our R is a smaller value. Solving this, we get an answer of 266. Let's see another type of question. Find the number of ways in which an arrangement of four letters can be made from the letters of word proportion. Here we are going to select first four letters from proportion and then arrange them. But selecting would not be easy because we have repetitions here. Let's figure out how many total letters we have and how many repeated values we have. So we have P and R two times, we have O three times and we have T, I and N only once. So we'll have many different cases in which we'll have to select different values and depending on how many repeated values we have, we will have different ways of writing the arrangement. So case one, I have no repeated values or no repeated letters. So I have option of T, I, N, but also I can take one of each of these. I will have P, R, O. So I have an option of six. I need to select four and arrange them. I can use permutation directly here and say six P four gives me selection as well as arrangement. That is 360. Case two, I would say I will have one repetition, one repetition of two. Now here I need one repetition of two values. That means I will be selecting P P R R or O O. So I have a group of two values and I have three similar groups out of which I will select only one. So I will have three C1 selection of such group. Then after selecting any of those group, let's assume we selected PP. Now for non repeated value, we have T I N, but also I will have R and O taken one at a time. Similarly, if I had O selected for the group, I will have had T, I, N, R and P for the non-repeated values. So we will have five non-repeated values after we have selected one group of repetition. 
So out of those five, I have to select any two values because I have already selected two values, either OO, PP or RR. So out of five, I need to select two letters. Now I have four letters out of which we have a repetition. So the uh, way of arrangement would be four factorial by two factorial. Solving this, we will get 360 ways of doing this as well. Let's talk about case 3 in which we will have two repetitions of two letters. So here from P, R and O, I will select two sets of two letters. That means if I have P, P, R, R and O, O, I can select either P, P, R, R or I will select O, O, R, R or I will select P, P and O, O. So the number of ways I can do that is 3 C 2. Now that is the only selection because we had to select only 4 letters and we have already selected 4 letters. And for arrangement we will have 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial. Another 2 factorial because we have 2 repetitions here. We have total 18 ways of doing this. Let's take our last case in which we will have 1 repetition of 3 letters. Now we have only one option for that, that would be O because we have only one letter that has three repetitions here. So the ways of selecting that would be one. But then I have selected only three letters, I have to select one more letter that would be selected from T, I, N, R or P. So again I have five options to select one more letter, so I will have 5, C, 1 and then out of 4, I will have 4 factorial ways divided by 3 factorial to arrange them. This can be done in 20 ways. Finally, for total, we will have to add them up. That would be 362 times plus 18 plus 20. That gives us 758 ways of doing this. Let's take another example. Find the number of ways of getting at least one head in a toss of 10 coins. That can be done by 10C1 or 10C2 or 10C3 or 10C4. This goes on till 10C10 ways. This will be the total number of ways. We will get at least one head in 10 coins. Now we can use this formula, summation r going from 0 to n, ncr that is equals to 2 raised to n. That gives us value 10c0 to 10c10 addition will give us nothing but 2 raised to 10. So if we want 10c1 to 10c10 where we are removing just 10c0, 10c0 is going to be nothing but 1. So we get 2 raised to 10 minus 1. That is 1, 0, 2, 3 ways. Now these were some examples where we use our permutation combination and I hope this was helpful in understanding permutation and combination. For more concepts of mathematics, please check out other videos on my channel and do like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.